thank you. Father, we give you praise. We give you honor. We worship your name, Father. We exalt you, almighty God. Father, today we just want to appreciate you. We want to say thank you for your goodness, for keeping us till now, Father God, for taking care of us from January to December, for you keeping our families, for preserving our soul, for not submitting us to the will of our enemies. Father, we are so grateful, oh God, we are grateful. We are grateful that we can stand on our feet. We are grateful that we can breathe, oh God, we don't have to use bottled oxygen. We are grateful to you, Father. We are grateful that your breath in our lungs is working. And Father, we can breathe freely, almighty God. Thank you so much for everything you've done for us. Thank you for your faithfulness, oh God. Lord, even as we want to go into your word today, Father, we've asked you earlier that you give us a word today. A word for every one of us, oh God. Father, we believe you. We expect that you speak to us. Amen. Father, the word is, is the word that is needed right now in our lives. Father, thank you for releasing that word. Father God, I submit my mouth, I submit my faculties, I submit everything to you. Holy Spirit, take over. Take over, take over, take over. In the mighty name of Jesus, mm -hmm. we take authority over every spirit of distraction, mm -hmm. every power that is not of God. We bind you now, we subdue you right now. Mm -hmm. In the name of Jesus, mm -hmm. thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Mm -hmm. Amen. Today, we are talking about love, the foundation for success. Praise the Lord. God has been ministering me this to me for us to go into this again because it's an area of our life that you know. Any let up, it's so easy for us to sleep. And because it's the only thing we need to succeed, we need to talk about it. Praise the Lord. Love the Foundation for Success is our title. And I want to go to um, second, uh, second John 6, if you can put it up for us. Second John 6. This, uh, uh, Jesus himself says something that on this hangs all the law and the prophets. He says, and now I beseech, no. Second John six, you know it only there's no chapter in it. Mm. Second John six, and this is love that we walk after His commandments. This is His commandment that, as you have heard from the beginning, you should walk in it. Why is He telling them that this is love? Thank God that God defined love for us because sometimes with the confusion of the world, our love as feelings, love as this, love as this. You sometimes you get overwhelmed about what really is the meaning of love. And you get confused about how to show love to other people. But God is definite. He said this is the commandment. Keeping God's commandment is working in love. And we'll see how it all plays out here. That you keep the commandment. That is what God calls love. So what is that commandment? I say, as you have heard from the beginning. What did they hear from the beginning? You know when the Bible says from the beginning. It's referring to what God even said from the beginning. Now let's go to uh, Deuteronomy 6.5. What is from the beginning? From the beginning. From the beginning. Say, and thou shalt love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. Please don't freak out because we say you love your God with all your heart, with all your soul. Because God, um, in the New Testament, God now defined it on how we are to bring this commandment to play. So love the Lord your God with all your heart. That is what they were told at the beginning. Now, Jesus himself referring to this. Let's go to Matthew 22. 36 to 40. Let's see how Jesus referred to this same commandment. Praise the Lord. Because if God doesn't tell us anything that he doesn't give us the ability to do. He says, Master. Is it 22? Yes. No, you're right. You're already there. Matthew 22, 36 to 40. He said, Master, you know, which is, the, we know the background to this story is that they've asked Jesus a lot of questions before here. What, should we pay tax to Imperial Caesar or not? Should we do this? And then said the Caesars came with their own about resurrection. Somebody married, married into seven times. In the resurrection, whose wife will she be? All that story is all in that chapter 22. Finally, the scribes now like, okay, you've answered well, let's just ask you this final one. Master, which is the great commandment in the Lord? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophet. On this hang all the law and the prophets. Praise the Lord. All the law and the prophets. And the reason why Jesus brought it is that you see how even in the New Testament, it's made easier for us that loving one another is loving God. Because, you know, um, 1 John 4, 18, I believe, it says, we love you because you first loved us. So if you don't receive the love of God, you cannot really love. 
He said, we love because you first, you love because he first loved us. So it's the love of God in us. And we will see how the love of God is already resident in us that enables us to love other people. We love because he first loved us. Praise the Lord. So it makes it easy. In the old commandment, they are struggling. And they struggle with it because they were not born again. Their spirit were not born again. So it's difficult for them to do this because they keep struggling with the love of God. Loving God, number one. And you remember that in the Old Testament, one of their greatest struggle is with idolatry. They keep struggling, you know, like they will be tempted to worship other gods and all. But we are positioned because it's been inside of us. And this is these are the things we are going to understand. Praise the Lord. So now... When we love, when we make Jesus the Lord of our lives, if we have received Jesus as the Lord of our lives, not that we are praying religion, you know, are you really born again? That is the first obedience to that commandment because that is the beginning of the step. You remember when he says keeping the word is loving God, isn't it? So when we have become born again, we are now keeping the word. That is the first step of obedience. Now, that place you put up, I want us to get it in LT, NLT version, Romans 5.5. 5. We want to bring us something there. Romans 5 5. It says here, and this hope will not lead to disappointment, for we know how dearly God loves us, because He has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with His love. And he said, this hope does not lead to disappointment. You remember when you put up this and I said, it ministered to us. Because the way the, um, um, King James Version said it, that hope does not make a shame, does not really bring it out for you to understand. He said that this hope does not lead to disappointment. And when we are in this study, you see also that love never fails. This hope does not lead to it. So when we are doing things God's way, it we will never be disappointed. He says, for the love of God is shed abroad. This NLT explains this, and this hope will not lead to this. For we know how dearly God loves us, because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. This love is inside of us. It's inside every child of God. So it's not something we say is in the mountain. Let me go and get it from the mountain. Or the word is, no, no, it's already inside of us. Praise the Lord. And that's why that um, 1 Corinthians 13 can tell us that this is the love of God and tell us how love behaves. Because the love is already inside of us. Now, um, why can we say that the love is already inside of us? Let's go to Galatians 5.22. The love of God is inside of us. But the truth is that as we begin to act on the word, on the knowledge of the word of God, as we begin to act, because that is, you know that a, a, a river or it can just be still. It's there dormant. Nothing is moving. But there's a level where it begins to, if, if you not begin to stir it, what will happen? It will begin to overflow. And that's when it overflows to other people. And it begins to overflow in our lives. So even though it's resident inside of us, it can just stay dormant. It's not. And then if it's dormant, unfortunately, we'll still be filled. Because the natural tendency of every man is to be selfish. You just saw me and Elijah right now. He took a two tambourine. He saw my own. I thought he was like trying to, for me to play. That's, a natural, that's our natural being, to be selfish. He wanted my own on top of the two he has. And that's just like a child. They will carry the one they have and then they are stretching out. That's a natural disposition of every human being. So the more we walk in the love of God, the more this will not begin to change in our lives. Praise the Lord. He says here, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. What fruit does the Holy Spirit produce? Love, joy, peace, just even um, faith. All of them are the fruit of the Holy Spirit in us. When did the Holy Spirit come to reside inside of you? Is it not the time you were born again? So you see, it is already resident inside every one of us. Praise the Lord. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. So it's there. It's there. But unfortunately, because it's there, doesn't mean it's working. It can stay there until you stir it up. Until you begin to obey. Praise the Lord. And that's what we are taking it step by step. So uh, now... Um, when we begin to act on God's word, that powerful force lies dormant. Love becomes active through knowledge. Now let's go to Philippians 1 9. Because it's true knowledge that the love of God inside of you becomes more active as you act on the love of God inside of you. Philippians 1 9. 
And this I pray, that your love may abound yet more and more. The love abounds, that's why we are talking it. That's why we are preaching it. Because the more you know about it, your love will abound more and more. In knowledge and in all judgment. Praise the Lord. In knowledge and in all judgment. Why judgment? When you are acting on the love of God, you are not afraid that this person is taking me. You know, like some situations you know and you know. Some people, you do something for them. You know, God leads you to do something. If that person is not working in the love of God, anytime they have a problem, they'll start coming to you again for that need. They're not making you their God. Do you understand me? The first time that you have a need and God means to to you to go to A, does it mean that that's the person that God will use for B? If you go there again, you may be disappointed. You're not working in the love. That's why the love of God has to do with judgment. So when you are working in the love of God, you're not afraid that people will take, um, how do I put that people will abuse you or whatever because there is a judgment in that. And that love of God, that's why sometimes there's also what is called tough love. And God deals with us. God deals it with us sometimes. You know, there are sometimes we'll do certain things as born again believers, new believers. God will allow it. Then suddenly you don't you do, you do some things and God is not allowing it anymore. Have, have you ever been there before? Tough love. Praise the Lord. So the love abounds, but also with judgment. Praise the Lord. We are going to discuss all these things. So now God's love is released in our life by acting on the knowledge of God's word. So when, if we are not acting on the knowledge of God's word, we are not releasing the love of God in us. Praise the Lord. When we are acting on the word of God, we are releasing the love of God in us. Praise the Lord. So now, without revelation knowledge, followed by action, I want to emphasize the action bit here. Because the love of God has nothing to do with feelings. Hello? It has nothing to do with feelings. As we go on, you'll actually notice that because the natural tendency... Our natural feeling is against the love of God. So until you learn to minimize your feelings, you cannot walk in the love of God. You cannot. Praise the Lord. So a time will come when it's not what I feel. What does God's love want me to do in this situation? Praise the Lord. So it says here, followed by action. Love has, it remains undeveloped and selfishness continues to reign supreme in us. So when we begin to act on the love of God, now, as we act on it, what happens is that, and as we obey God's word, the love of God begins to flow in us. Praise the Lord. Now, let's go to 1 John 2, 5 and 6. Whoso keepeth his word, in him verily. Do you see again why keeping the word? And please, when we are talking about, remember that the word of God will abound in knowledge. That's why we are studying about the love of God. You believe the love that God has for you. You walk in that love. And because you walk in that love, you begin to experience, praise the Lord, your life found everything you need in life. Our success depends upon the love of God. How much is flowing in us will determine how much we go in life. How much we flow in the love of God will determine how much we fulfill God's plan for us in this earth. Praise the Lord. He said, whosoever keeps his word. Do you see again, keeping the word. Keeping the word is walking in the love of God. In him verily is the love of God perfected. When we keep the word of God, the love of God is being perfected. He said, hereby we know that we are in him. He that said he abided in him ought also so to walk, even as he walked. Another place, is that 5 and 6? Okay. So now, what we are trying to say is that when we keep God's word, we are walking in that love. Praise the Lord. We are walking in that love. So as we begin to act on God's word, the love of God will be perfected in us. That's when we begin to flow from, from us. What is that love being perfected in us? It's effortless now. The love of God flows from us to others. Praise the Lord. The love of God. Now, the love of God is very important. I've said it. That how accurately we walk in the love will determine how far we reach our destiny. How far we walk with God. How far God fulfills his purpose in our lives. Praise the Lord. This is because every other spiritual force depends on the word of God, on the walking in love. Now, let's go to uh, 1 Corinthians 13. I'll read it briefly, and then we'll see how everything we are doing, our success in walking by faith, our success in not obeying fear, our success in receiving promises of God, our success in everything is hinging upon the work and upon our love work. Praise the Lord. So it says, if I could speak with the languages of earth and of angels, 
but I didn't love others. I would only be a noisy gang or a gang assembler. What I want to mention here, if you remember the Corinthian church, this is the church mostly they were speaking in. They had all the gifts of knowledge working in the church. Is that not so? That's why Paul wrote them a letter to, on how to do it properly. They spoke in tongues. They were, they were prophesying. They were doing everything, but they are the most carnal church. Ask me how it's possible. It's because if we do all these things and we don't do it in the love of God, we become carnal. You can have all this be spiritual. And actually, the, the yastic for being spiritual is not how much you know the Bible. Am I speaking to I'm speaking to you, I'm speaking to myself. It's not how much you know the Bible. It's not how much, it's how much the love of God is working in you. That is what spirituality is judged by. If not, Paul would have said that the Corinthians Christians are the most spiritual ginger that he knows. But he rebuked them for carnality. In that they are speaking in tongues, in that they are prophesying, in that everything they are doing. He said, You desire spiritual gifts. They were still having party spirit. I am of Paul. I am of Apollos. They were countenancing somebody who was living with their father's wife. And he has to rebuke them. Praise the Lord. How come that he didn't tell them, oh, you are the most spiritual of churches with all their gifts? So you see, with God, it's not how much, because some people have faith to do certain things. It's not how much. It's how much the love of God is working in you. That determines how much you have grown as a Christian. Can we talk to ourselves today? Because I'm talking to you, I'm talking to myself. Praise the Lord. He says, if I, now he says, okay, I can speak with the languages of earth and of angels, but didn't love others. It's an, an a noisy clan. Noisy, uh, 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 noisy gang, a uh, clanky symbol. If I had the gift of prophecy, do you see prophecy there? Because you can be prophesying and yet not be in love. If I had the gift of prophecy and if I understand all God's secret plans and possesses all knowledge, do you see that? You are so adept in the Bible. You can know the Bible and yet, if I had such faith that I could move mountains, how come I can have faith to move mountains and yet not have love? That's what the Bible is saying. It's possible that your love is not perfect. Praise the Lord. Say, they didn't love others. I will be nothing. If I give everything I have to the poor, and there are people like this. There are people. We are not talking about unbelievers now. We are talking about us Christians. You can do this from whatever is your motive. Because God looks at the motive of the heart. Even giving can be with the wrong motive. If the motive is not love, at the end, God says that your work will be burnt. Praise the Lord. And your soul will be saved as by fire. So there are some things we are doing. If love is not our motivation, it does not count with God. May God help us in Jesus' name. Mm-hmm. And so I have to be poor and even sacrifice my body. I could boast about it. How much I have sacrificed. How much I do this. How much I do this. And if I didn't love others, I would have gained nothing. Praise the Lord. So you see again that there are so many areas that this thing will, this is like a foundation for us. This is like a foundation. Well, I'm saying this because if we're moving into 2022, and by the grace of God, I'm going to give some journal, devotional in this regard. For all of us, if we begin to do this perfectly, you will notice that so many things, because love will affect your feelings. If you're walking in the love of God, where would love affect your feelings? Okay, so let me just uh, read this out to us. Why love will, will, will work against you? Now, love is directly opposed to the senses. The senses have been trained to put themselves and their desires above anything. That's true. If you're hungry, your body is screaming, feed me, feed me, feed me. That is it. The senses, the world, takes care of number one. Take care of number one. You think of yourself first. He says, he's been trained in selfishness. Love does not, that place we are reading in 1 Corinthians 13, if you read from 4, he said love does not seek its own. Do you see that love is directly opposed to the way of the world? If love does not seek its own, meanwhile, the Bible says there that, you understand, you see, so the war of the world, so going the war of love is counter to the way things would, should have been. Praise the Lord. He says, now, he says, uh, so why is counter and why the whole system is structured in this way? Until we make a definite decision to work in love in every situation, it's not going to work. The very reason that you're hearing this and you determine, just like one person that says, God, teach me patience. And that week, he had the greatest testing of his patience because the system of the world is the fault negative. So if you make it, but your determination to do this will begin to, you ask the Holy Spirit, I'm doing this because this is my work 
for the next, by the grace of God. Oh, Holy Spirit, help me. Now, when you are about to step out, the Holy Spirit will begin to flag you. Don't do this. Don't do this. Don't do this. You're stepping out of love work. Praise the Lord. May God help us in Jesus' name. Galatians 5, 6 says that um, faith worketh by love. Faith. Now, why do I say that your promise is also dependent upon walking in the love of God? Sometimes we're believing God for stuff. And I don't know if you've been there. They, Satan will raise issues around you. A man of God was preaching. He says that, um, that because that Satan is not omniscient, what he does is that he, he will give, give certain suggestions. And I told us that the way that Satan knows what we are doing, where we are at the moment, is what we say and what we do. Mm -hmm. For example, if we inject some fear into us and you know, tell us some fearful things, how will Satan know whether it has hit, hit home? It's your action and what you say. For example, if you're sharing with some other believers or sharing with somebody or you're talking to somebody, you say on the phone, you say exactly what Satan has ministered to you. He knows he has hit home. Mm -hmm. Or you take action. He tells you, oh, go and check on your child. Maybe your child is dead. And you quickly run and go and check on your child. You see, he has hit action. He, he knows now that you are obeying him. Praise the Lord. So that's how he knows what we do, how, where we are. He doesn't need to be omniscient to know where we are because our actions will say, you know, in the Bible says that of the abundance of the heart, what we speak. The man speaks. So what you say will tell the enemy where you are at. Praise the Lord. So now it takes faith. Now, where do I, uh, let's now go to that. Um, love does not seek it. So let's go to that first Corinthians 13. Let's go to four and eight. It says love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous um, or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. We are going to talk about this, how love behaves later. So love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It's not irritable. And it keeps no record of being wronged. May God help us in Jesus' name. Love does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices when the truth wins out. A woman of God was preaching about this. And he says that, do you know that even when um, something, you know, like uh, your best friend was um, left by the husband, went to live with another woman, blah, 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 and you hear something negative about that person. Like if you're rejoicing, you're rejoicing in evil, and that's not love. Let's say you hear, you know, that what we say serves him right. When you say something like serves somebody right, do you understand me? It's not working in love. You say you have no right to do that. Praise the Lord. So anyway, it says uh, never lose his faith. It's always hopeful. Now, it's always hopeful. Never lose his faith. And then just through every circumstance. Lack of endurance is lack of love. Lack of endurance. May God help us in Jesus' name. Prophecy and speaking in unknown languages and special languages will become useless. But love will last forever. He says here that love will never fail. Love will never fail. In, I think it's First John. He says that perfect love casts out fear. Is that not so? So the more we are perfected in this love work, think about it. If I'm not getting into this so much as I'm believing God for, then it's difficult for me to get offended. Think about it. Because if my love work, and I know, you remember that I'm saying that every feeling of the flesh is about, is the way of the flesh, is anti-love. Now, I have grown in such a way that things of the flesh, I have trained myself in the love work so much that I do not count it anymore in that level. Then no matter what anybody does, it will not hurt me. Praise the Lord. E -U -E -W -E cannot cause it a new level of selfishness. Because love is revolutionary. Why is it selfishness? Because in that way, you are not hurt. Things are working for you. It doesn't matter what people do to you. Things are working for you. You are actually more successful. Is it not selfish then to do it this way? To think about it. Is that what EW can say is the new selfishness? The new selfishness. Because doing it the other way. Because it says that love never fails. Because what we are talking today, we have to also use our faith to walk in the love of God. Praise the Lord. If I believe God and I'm using my faith and I know that doing it God's way, I will not fail. It takes faith. Will it not take faith? It will take faith. Because that's why he says it takes faith to believe the love of God. Praise the Lord. So now, 
Now, love never fails. Love will not fail. In no way will the love of God, if we're doing these things our way, perfect love casts out fear. What is he talking about? What is perfect love? Cast out fear. Every fear step we take is because we don't trust. Because when we're talking about the love of God, we're talking about it both sides. We talk about the love that God has for us. But then also, the love we are also supposed to show to one another. When he says that perfect love casts out fear, let's think about it. When we are afraid about our finances, think about, do you, is the love of God working in your life properly? No. Why? Because you are not trusting in God's ability to provide for you. Because you are not you are not confident of the love of God for you in that area. Do we understand? So, any area, just think about it, is because there is a love, def- a love fault. Any area of our life we are struggling is a love fault. Because we do not trust the love of God to provide for us. We do not trust that God is able to do it. That's why fear is in our lives. May God help us in Jesus' name. So you see, fear Obtaining the promises of God, walking in the gifts in the um, uh, in the gifts of the Spirit, like speaking in tongues and everything. Wow. Everything is perfect when we walk in love. Praise the Lord! And do you know something? There are many situations where we'll go deeper into this. This is just like an introduction. There are many situations. Why would they not? Why would Jesus pass through their midst and it's not hurt? Think about it. Why would Jesus, you know, when they were stoning, uh, when they were, they wanted to stone Jesus several times. It's because Jesus was perfect in the love of God. He was working on it. That's why he could not be touched by it. Praise the Lord. So if Jesus had anything, because the enemy knows when we also um, go out of step. And that's what he uses against us. Praise the Lord. And it works against our faith. Believing God for anything. So, could it be also that the reason why certain things work in our life is that God is also perfecting us in every area of our life so much that by the time we finish, there will be no pride in us. There will be no, like, you know, because we don't know ourselves. You cannot see your back. God knows where we are in the journey. So sometimes, you know, that's why that some people say it's good that I'm afflicted it, because in it, I knew your way. That's the reason they say it. It's not because the affliction is brought by God. But sometimes in our seeking God, in those afflictions, in our seeking God, God begins to refine our character. And let me tell us, there's no if God is to use you, and I know that every one of us, God wants to use us, there's no way he will leave you in your comfort zone. He will not leave you with those impatience. He will not leave you with those, hey, 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 no, 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 I can't take this. I can't. He will not leave you there. Praise the Lord. Maybe this is the reason why this word is coming to us, so that we'll begin to change. May God help us in Jesus' name. This is, I'm sorry, but if anybody here thinks that you don't need this message, then that's the reason why you need it. Every one of us, we need this, because we are in different levels of this journey. God wants to transform us. God wants to change us. There are certain things that we find ourselves is still there. It's time for us to change. And until we call upon God, if now our, remember what we are talking about. And we, I keep saying it. When we do things not God's way, it doesn't change God's love for us. But it affects how much we prosper. It affects how much Satan has enrolled into our lives. For these two reasons alone, even if it doesn't affect God's love for us, because God's love for us is unconditional. But God, if you will have a child, would you like your child to live in the optimum, the best of their level, the highest? It's true, every one of us. So that's why God is not, God will not leave us here. A man of God was just saying that he was telling God, God, I want to hurt Satan. Tell me, I want to hurt him real bad. I want to hurt him real bad. And God says, do you know what God told him? God says, yes, you know, we want to hurt Satan. He says, yes, 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 Lord, I will. He said, God, God said, do Satan, do to Satan what you do to me. And he was like, taking a Lord, what do I do to you? He said, never listen to him, never do what he says. Huh? I hope God is not telling us the same thing. Maybe stand up to pray. <laughs> Let's begin to pray.